I want to talk to you in particular about the last couple of weeks with the Black Lives Matter movement and getting more attention and the protests we've had around it and, and the death of George Floyd. I know you've been really vocal about it on social media and sharing some of your own experiences that have at times happened on the athletics track. Why is it so important for you personally to, to be a voice and to be speaking out on these things? I think it's really important right now um, to, for those people that have a voice, those people that are in a position where they've got a platform to make use of it. Um, for so many years now, we have kind of just batted it off essentially and just kind of been like, okay, this is the way it is, when really it shouldn't be like that. And I think because the world has stopped, we've obviously got this pandemic and everything stopped, there's no support, there's no nothing. Um, it's kind of opened up this whole area where people have seen what's happened with Ahmad Amar and people have seen what's happened with George Floyd um, and Brianna and they've kind of just been like, wait, this is not right. And I think it's kind of just opened this door um, for us to be able to be like, okay, actually, while we've got the stage and we've got kind of people's eyes, let's really show them what we have to deal with and see if we can create change. Um, and I think for someone like me, um, and a lot of other people, there's been um, a lot of people, uh, John Bulliger, and um, I know there's a lot, lot of different people kind of speaking out. It's, it's good that those people with a platform do say something um, and just allow the rest of the world to be able to see, because it, it's all good and well as doing these protests, um, but what happens after that? And I think it's going to be people in higher places speaking out and then saying what we want essentially and just it's just that education i think education is such a massive key but um when we look at it a lot of it is just systemic racism and essentially we need to be breaking down kind of a platform that's already there so it's kind of re rebuilding so many things um and i think yeah it's going to take um a, a lot to change that but when people start speaking out and people stop being afraid i think people um especially when you look um kind of in uh, the arts industries, kind of all the musicians and like actresses, uh, they're afraid to speak out because of how that may impact their career. Um, and that, that's what's kind of kept us down for so long. Um, I think now we've got the stage, a lot of people are taking the risk and saying how they feel. And I think it's key that we continue to do that and continue to not allow it to just be a trend in this kind of moment where um, we've, we've got a stage and people don't, don't have anything to do so let's go and protest we want it to continue because it's not just a a now thing it's, it's not just a, okay right now let black lives matter like they've always mattered they always will matter we've always had to deal with this in my 29 years of life i've dealt with it from a very young age um but i don't want to have to deal with it. i don't want my children to have to deal with it so we really need to just keep pushing and allow things to change and it's gonna take a lot and it might not necessarily happen very easily um i always refer to the fact that the um the speech by martin luther king the i have a dream speech um seemed like it was a massive changing point um and similarly now we've had the biggest kind of civil rights movement with all 50 states and 18 countries doing protests um but back when he did that speech the five years after that were probably the worst five worst years for kind of um, the black race. Um, and it was also when he was, uh, he was assassinated. So we've got to be prepared um, that it might not necessarily happen the way we want and it might not happen as quick as we want, but we have to continue pressing on and keep, and keep being the voice for people that don't necessarily have a voice. You shared an experience you had recently, actually back out on the athletics track where someone shouted something at you that was racist essentially in its undertones if not on the face of it before the last couple of weeks, is that a story you'd have shared on social media or is that something you maybe would have kept to yourself? Do you know what? It, honestly, it's something, it, it happens so often that you, you just, you, you gain tough skin and you just kind of like, you laugh it off or you just kind of dismiss it. And it's not something that I would naturally share. Um, but I think because of the situation we're in and the fact that, people are now being made aware. I'm thinking, well, actually, I'm going to have to say something and just let people know that in everyday life, this is the stuff that we have to deal with. And I think speaking out on it, I think people don't really understand what racism is on all different levels. And people don't understand that racism happens on a daily basis. Um, I remember kind of earlier in the year, one of my teammates um, said, um, we were having a conversation and he said, racism doesn't exist. And I was just like... 
I literally have to deal with it every single day. And, and it baffled me that he thought that, but he's grown up as a white middle-class male. So it, it, it's kind of that ignorance is bliss. Like he's, he's not aware of it because it doesn't affect him. And that's the thing. I think people aren't aware of it. So now we've got the stage, we need to make them aware of all, all the things that we have to deal with. And, and that's how you kind of allow people to realize and think actually we need to make a change. And it's about unifying people. The way that we're going to change is the unity and it's coming together. It's not about segregation. Um, and I think allowing people to have that insight into what we have to deal with allows them to see it and be like, actually, that's not right. Um, and then they're aware of it. Like, it's not that people are racist and that, that, that they're just like being like, ignoring it it's just the fact that sometimes they're just not aware of it um so the opportunity is here to be able to make people aware of it and i'm going to take every opportunity to to speak out, out on it um it is something i've realized i'm actually quite passionate about <laughs> um you don't realize it until kind of yeah you get the opportunity to speak on it and i mean i had a very long conversation with my family yesterday um, just kind of speaking about kind of the history of it and people speak, speak about the education and learning about history um, but then you go back to the slave era no one thinks about what was before that kind of um, before um, colonized Africa like what was it like then and th that's the education we need to be given the education of not just American black history but British black history um, I learned about the uh, Bristol bus, bus boycott um, at 2017 Pride of Britain when um, the guy got um, an award for it. And that should be something that I should be aware of. That, that's my history. Like, why are these things not taught in school? I feel like um, a lot of the time we learn about stuff that is the nice stuff and you don't necessarily hear, hear about the stuff that's the bad stuff. And we need to kind of, it needs to be level.